Hey guys, this is what we are going to be building in this tutorial. This is the page we are going to be building with HTML and CSS just to just crack up your HTML CSS skills a bit. This is it. And it is responsive. So this is the responsive view. And uh, we can click the navbar. Yep, so this is what took us <laughs> about two hours to build. It wasn't easy. And uh, let's get to the tutorial. Right now. Okay, hey guys. In this video, we're going to be building the chirp landing page. So let's quickly get started with it. We're going to be building this mobile first. And I've already had the Visual Studio Code extension link to the starter files in the description down below. You're going to get the assets, the design files. And the rest couple of us so let's quickly get into building it okay so i have the html document empty css empty javascript file uh the javascript is going to be minimal okay so let's get this okay i'm going to have a nava said we're building this mobile first uh, yeah because that's because it's way simpler to build this uh, mobile first so we're gonna have a, a class of brand, we're gonna have the chirp. Uh we're gonna have a UL. Uh we're gonna have the UL here, and we're also gonna have UL is gonna have all the things on the desktop view portion of it. But we'll get to that in a minute. So let's just put the A tag image source of the hamburger menu. So the dot for slash we're going to the assets folder we look for the hamburger menu take it with the sidebar and you can leave your alt tag or you could just write hamburger menu whatever works for you okay we can come here look at this in the browser you can see that we are getting started with it and uh, remember it is mobile first so console come here to the mobile version Looking good, looking good so far. Can't even tell the difference. Okay, so that's it for the north bar. So what we want to do is I want to come to the next session after that, which is the image and uh, this like the hero section of the website, essentially. So we'll put this inside a div of hero and say hero dash image. We'll put this inside assets then we say hero image i can't see what i told you this part of the website is what we call the hero image so we'll go with the tablet view image what we're going to do is we're going to use css to change it later on as you can see we have that image and you're gonna understand why we put this inside a div in a moment very soon. So let's just keep on going. We have the div with the hero of image, and we have this one have a div of hero text. Okay, hero text. Uh what do we want to do inside of hero text? So we want to have um, some text. We will call put this inside a h2 Twitter analytics. Put a break tag taking to a whole new level. So here, an easy way to just you don't have to type the text. The text is not what we're going for here. This is in JavaScript, so we can just say lorem twenty. That will give us some adequate dummy text for us to work with. Now you know what we can even take this further and say lorem 30. If you even want more, if you want even more than that, you could go keep on going, but I won't recommend it at all. Okay, so we're gonna have the button. I'm gonna say uh button is gonna have an image, Twitter assets. I'm gonna go and we're gonna say Twitter blue, save this. We'll put this into a separate line so we can see this. Uh yeah. So the button is also going to say sign in 
with Twitter. Okay, and now what we have to do is I want to have a paragraph tag of uh, yes, we want to have a paragraph tag of learn more. Learn more. It's also supposed to have an image dot forward slash. Go into the assets folder. Looks like we don't have that check mark. Let's see if that's it. Nope, that's not it. Okay. There's going to be a lot of Flexbox usage in this website because I normally use Flexbox over CSS Grid because CSS Grid is like the heavy guns. So uh, the, this sign in button and the learn more are going to be inside a div. So we're going to say div of. Uh, BTN, sorry, BTN group, probably seen something like that in Flexbox, but in, sorry, in Bootstrap or one other library, or just stealing it, because we can save that. We have that now. So this one, well, I'm gonna leave this one a little bit later, so let's just come here and let's just keep it simple, okay? Keep it simple. Join 195, sorry, 195, others who have analyzed you can, you can use lorem share but i just like typing it sometimes nothing particular just like flexing my super fast typing speeds okay now let's continue so it's important to know that uh the hero text should contain everything that has to do with text or button whatever so we're gonna x this paragraph tag and continue so we are done with the hero text so i'm gonna take i'm gonna get some water to drink and when we come back from a very short break we're gonna do this other part of the website Okay, so we're back from our quick water hydrating break. We'll probably go on another one soon, so I hope you had yours break as well. And now let's continue. So if you can see, I touched the channel, you can see where the hero div ends. It ends here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next content on the page, which I just put this inside a section or we could put it inside me in this case so and I'm not quite sure if this is the main part of the website uh, it could be okay let's put it inside the main I'm gonna say put inside this into a h2 and say something like uh Features that help you tweet smart faster, smarter features, and uh, it does anybody really use Twitter here? And Twitter, Twitter is a very popular social media platform, but I don't quite understand. Like, if you do not have a large following, can you still be using Twitter as a small micro creator? Because most of the people that have Twitter are people who are I already have big following on somewhere else something like that so flex dash container do you be using flexbox we also use flexbox as here in the hero heavily just because we did not name it flex container that doesn't mean we don't, we don't use it so the model of what we're going to do we're going to do one of these and we're going to duplicate it multiple times so we're going to have cart image is going to be a it's going to be an emoji 
because they didn't give us they didn't give us something to work with they didn't give us the actual image in the file in the starter files so if we look at it there is nothing like that here so, emoji analytics then what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna have a paragraph tag of lorem 20 or lorem 30 save okay then what i want to do is i want to put inside a span tag so and i'll give this a class of icon okay so that should be nice let's look at it in the browser which you are dying to know okay it's coming out we'll remove this part it's coming out So I touch it, I know where the card begins from, and we're gonna duplicate this one, two, three times. And each time we just change the emoji. Two, three, four. So the next one is gonna be smart and analyzer. Smart analyzer. Why the next one? So is i'm gonna use this emoji this emoji is pretty cool why the other one is gonna be scheduled tweets why okay that is a newspaper that's not a bundle of money scheduled tweets schedule your tweets then what i'm gonna put here we we'll just write newspaper. Oh, look at this that one. But I do like this one better. Then last but not least, we have dark mode. How many of you guys use light mode, right? You really use Visual Studio Code on light mode. I'd love to know that percentage of you guys. Because how do you use Visual Studio Code on light mode, bro? It's weird. I just type the moon. How do you use Visual Studio Code on Light Mode? I don't feel using Visual Studio Code on Light Mode. You guys are weirdos. <laughs> okay, now so let's continue and let's look at this in the browser because why not? It's looking exactly like the exact site. I'm just joking. It's looking nothing like it. <laughs> okay, outside of the main, we're going to have a section. We'll give this. A class of testimonials. We'll give this a H2, or what did we give it here? A H2 that says, What are customers say? Okay, now this is quite a, very, a much more difficult card to design. So I'm going to shift my chair for this one. This one is a much more difficult card to design because there are a lot of things going on here. Yes, this part is in a flex container. This, the outer of that is also in a flex container. And we have this and we have this. Not extremely difficult, but it's just much more difficult to sell. So we say test testimonial. So the container is called testimonials, and each of them is called a testimonial. So the first thing we're gonna start this slowly. We're gonna say flex container. So we're gonna be using flex container everywhere, but what is gonna differentiate it is the parent. So in the CSS, we could say main flex container. In this one, it will be testimonials flex container. Okay. Or a testimonial flex container here. The flex container. So what we want to do is that we'll have the image dot forward slash assets user avatar one next VG file 
Okay, so next VG file. That is quite weird. SVG files are not suitable for okay. Okay, so we're gonna have a paragraph of the of but right before we have that paragraph, we have a H4 of for example Sarah May. Then below inside of it we have at Sarah underscore me or Sarah. And that's in this Sarah, this Sarah. Sarah is S A R A H. This is Sarah. This is Sarah. <laughs> okay, let's continue. So we have the H4 and this. So what I'm what's saying is that these three are gonna be flexed. And they are also gonna be flexed against this guy too. So put these three in their own different container. So we'll call this avatar. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna flex the avatar against the image, the Twitter image. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but I hope it does. I will say Twitter blue. Last but not the least, outside of the flex container, we'll have the I tried out a chip and it was amazing. Love everything. Thank you. So we'll save this part. So now that we have that, we just have to just do this one, which is the flex of the heart against the March 20th, against the date of when I was doing it. We have that heart image. Okay, like we have it. Yay, we have it. I was thinking we didn't have it. And I was going to skip it, but it was is right. We have it, which is nice. Okay, so outside of the paragraph tag. I told, we are going to have the flex container. We're going to have the flex, or let's just call it the date container. I don't want to use flex container too much. Date container. We're going to have the image. We're going to have the image dot forward slash assets like dot svg let's make sure it's the correct like okay we have that great and the way flex work work is i flex each single element so if we just put if we don't put the two inside two is going to be flexed and put somewhere here so we want the two and the like to be one element we want the march 2022 21 to be one element so we'll put this inside some kind of element maybe a paragraph tag image that will put two at the side then another paragraph tag says match I think by far the most the most HTML tags the most HTML tags that I've used a lot are paragraph and div tags Paragraphs and diff tag. I one of the most HTML tags that I've used a lot. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I think they are the most used. Paragraph and diff tags. Very especially the diff tag. It's very, very useful. And when I was learning HTML, I did not know what it means. So great. We have finished one. What we want to do is I want to duplicate it a second time. Copy. Duplicate duplicate save and what we want to do is i want to change from avatar 001 to avatar 002 we change this to avatar sorry avatar 003 3 then we change this to avatar 002 we'll look in the browser see we have our different avatars
So after the testimonial section, we have the section of pricing section sorry section pricing so what do we want to do here is simple start with our h2 one simple price break plan simple then we'll put out a paragraph tab that says start growing your twitter and if you have not subscribed to the channel at this point <laughs> i have been watching the video up to this point you haven't subscribed to the channel i will be very surprised You have been listening to me talk for about almost for about almost 20 minutes and you haven't subscribed. Wow. You are surprising. Yeah, there's a reason why I don't I don't take to subscribe in the beginning of the video. I don't know. Maybe I should, but I just feel like you came here to learn some stuff, not to hear me tell you about subscribing. So we have the paragraph which I just typed and I was telling you something off okay notice that this button here is the same button we have here this button let's try and do my British accent there it's a button so what I'm gonna do now is that we're gonna write monthly nine dollars a month rate my British accent in the comment section below okay now so let's continue we're gonna say price table what we're gonna do is that we're gonna say a paragraph text of grey. Ah, it will be really lovely doing this with tailwind CSS. In fact, why didn't I do this with tailwind CSS? Like it would have been really lovely. I don't know why I should have done this with tailwind CSS. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is simple H4 nine dollars slash paragraph and again we want to make sure that this special text here has to be smaller what we do is that we use a span for this so span is an inline element if we use a paragraph it will break it into its own line and we don't want that disgusting behavior here so we're going to say span slash month and we're going to know we're going to give this span class h4 uh h4 x or oh, h4 no x h4 y okay i'm i'm very bad at naming things it's not my fault Okay, so if I see where the checkbox comes into price, so we have the price. Then you see we have a bunch of lines here, which we're gonna do in a moment. But well, first of all, we have to make sure we do this thing here. We're gonna use paragraphs for that. Image dot for slash assets check mark SVG cause check mark so what we do inside here is i will say unlimited star scheduled tweets and threads threads the twitter the social media platform now take out twitter So we duplicated it three times because that's how we do it. We'll change this one to schedule up to three tweets. And we'll change this one to real time blah blah blah.
save you come to the browser we see everything here unlimited real time blah 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 hmm. <laughs> that's a really nice thing from the social media app <laughs> or a social media planner okay 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 we're gonna leave it uh, you could change it i recommend you change it if i change it okay so let's remove this i noticed that this was twice which it's not supposed to be okay last but not the least the button we're gonna give this class a special button because it's a clause in the website three times i'm gonna say it's two times but there's another part where your course i haven't told you about but it's a cause on the website three times essentially. I'm gonna copy the exact same button. I want to give this button a class of uh, blue BTN. The reason why I'm giving it blue BTN is that there are other places in the web page where we have. Last but not the least. Oh. The footer. So the footer. Can't believe we have gotten to the end of this. Wow, we have gone to the end of the HTML. So start. Actually, this is in the end. We'll come back here later. <laughs> uh, okay, but this is like ninety percent of the HTML. There's something I left out purposely so that. I put it in you you understand it better so this is like 90 percent of the HTML so we say we'll come up back we'll copy this say chirp and we'll say image the for slash asset slash Twitter black, okay. Then we'll come here, say a tag to nowhere privacy policy, privacy policy, and copy terms of use. So simple. But what we want is that these two are in a flex container because one, two, three. These two are one. One, two. So in order to do that, they have to be in one element. Understanding this it will help you to understand Flexbox a little much better and how you can use Flexbox more advanced. Okay, so we are linked up to a HTML and CSS file. Okay, okay, we are not linked up, so let's link. So link CSS style the CSS then we'll come here give it a body background color red congratulations now we have linked up our CSS file so we're gonna take a quick drinking water break and we'll be back stay tuned Okay, so how was your break? Up was nice. Mine was also nice as well. Okay, so now let's get into building this, and this is not looking very great at the moment. So let's start working. Okay, so let's try in the body. We want to give everything a width of our eighty percent and a margin. Of zero after because body is like one kind of global container, okay. That's looking nice. But what is breaking the layout is the fact that this image is destroying the layout. Okay. So the in the you want the hero image because there are multiple images on the page you want to give this a width and there are multiple images in the hero as well so let's be specific here there's this image there's this image here so we'll give this id we we'll give it an id in fact so we'll say id hero dash image i 
and we change it to a hash. So I want to say with 100%. So that is why it's inside a container, because if we remove the container, the width 100% is a relative unit to what the container has. Because if we remove the container now, you can see it's going to mess up the layout. And if we remove the container, it's still going to do OK because of the fact that it's inside this we will div. But in general, the container helps to control it so if we say with class hero image so the hero image class is the container by the id is the actual image so if we give this a width of 1000 pixels 100 pixels this is going to be extremely tiny but if we give this a width of 80 percent you can see comes out okay okay see so giving the body a width of 80 percent is all right but if you come here it's much bigger than that let's view this image don't they have one for mobile view desktop view i think the desktop view own is more similar to the so we're going to use the desktop view instead. So we'll change this immediately. We'll use the desktop view. And it's looking quite small. So what we do is I will come here, we'll make this 90%. This is looking a lot better about the image. I'm not quite impressed with the size of the image. The image is still looking quite small relatively. So image is still looking quite small so what i want to do i want to cancel out that margin there margin zero pixel but we still have the margin hmm. okay yeah this has a width of 80 percent let's give this a width of 100 percent Aha, uh -huh. so it's looking way better now. Now we have that looking good. Let's come to the chirp. So the nav bar essentially. I'm supposed to start with the nav bar. The nav bar here will just give it a display of flex, justify content, space between. And what we want to do is that the body doesn't have it's not doesn't have the hero, sorry, doesn't have a background of it doesn't have a back background it has this kind of creamy background and to detect that we're going to be using a chrome extension called color zilla because these guys they did not give us the color that we need to do that so let's come here and detect so i'm just going to allow this and come in a moment color zilla Yes, 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 yes. Okay. okay, so now I have gotten the I have gotten the I have gotten the color hero. I want this. I want to say background. Save. Okay. 
So what we'll do is that this will take this, cut this from here. Give everything. In fact, we'll give the body, the body a margin of zero. So let's make sure that this is flushed up to the exact end. Okay. I will give the bodies a much nicer font. So font family system UI. It's not supposed to be system UI, but this font is a much better font. And we can see what we are developing much, much better now. So what we do is I will come to the hero. We'll give it this that. But we don't want to give it with 90% because the color is supposed to go all the way to the inside. Wrong page. It's color is supposed to go all the way to the end there. Okay, so we don't want to give it there. So there are two ways around this. So the first way, we don't want to give it that. Let's try padding zero out. If that's gonna work. Okay, so that doesn't work. The second way around this is to have another div inside the hero that will not give. 90% because if we give the div a hero of 90% it's going to affect it and we don't want it and the color is no longer going to go all over to the end so that's why we have to that's what we have to do so let's fold up the rest so we don't want to look at everything at once it's going to look mercy messy so the hero okay so what we're going to do is we're going to say hero dash container and uh, we're gonna fold everything inside here as well. We just have two div hero text and hero image. Hero container, save. Come here, and what we'll do is I will say hero container. Sorry, we spelled container wrongly. Container. What we do is I will remove this code, we put this code here, we change it to margin zero auto. Give this a width of 90%. Save. I see it, it has that spacing, and at the same time, it has the color goes. All the way to the end which is nice as well so we say we'll give this 20 pixels or two so we have some okay. okay zero auto is enough and we'll give this padding top on the hero image I just realized something the head the the Nava is inside the hero so what we want to do let's get started in the number we'll give the number a width of 90 percent as well let's inspect the number As you can see, this UL is affecting our Nava right now, and I kind of know why. So let's remove that first. Pretend that that isn't there. You no, know let's change it to space around instead. instead of space between. Okay, so we'll give the Nava a padding bottom of 20 pixels. We'll also give it a padding top as well of 20 pixels. And as for the Nav A, Nav A, which is also the brand, what we'll do, we want to do here is I want to say text decorate text decoration none. We'll say text transform capitalize so this is just going to capitalize the first letter make sure that this is well capitalized 
this is not quite the blue color but we'll come back to that in a minute i'll adjust it and make everything look perfect so let's come here to the button so for that button i want to give the button a display of flex align items center to make sure it is vertically the image inside of it is vertically centered nice when I say padding, give this some nice good padding. Padding 20 pixels, 30 pixels. That is a little bit quite much. We'll give this 10, 20. Matter the values and make sure that the first value is very small and the second value. That's how you give padding. Yeah, we want to increase the width of the button. We give us a width of 90% as well. We'll give this a text align text align of center hmm why is it not center text i will just give it justify content center since we are on flexbox nice now what we want to do is i want to see border none outline none background it's going to be that blue color that we talked about earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that blue color right now. So I'm going to come here. So I'm going to look for that blue color and get it. See, we get the blue color. Okay. Okay, so we have the blue color now. We should have it. So just give me a second right here. Okay, so this is the color. And to the A tag as well. So where's that now? A, we want the color to be that color as well. That's the color. I want to give it a color of white. So button, color, white, font family, inherit, which is that font we gave it earlier. And as for the image as well, what we want to do to the image start we want to give it a different want the color to be white all right so what i want to do is i want to come to the css we give this a border radius of 10 pixels maybe 10 pixels is too much here yeah? Give it five pixels. Okay, nice. So what we do is I will come to the learn more as well. So the learn more is inside a paragraph tag there, but it's not just inside any paragraph tag. It's inside button go paragraph tag because there are paragraphs up literally everywhere on websites. So button group p tag. And what do we want to simply do? What we want to simply do is I want to give this a color. So we'll get that color from here. Okay. So we'll give it color of that. Okay. I uh, will give this. text aligned center okay but just to just make sure it's perfectly aligned with the button because we'll just just make sure everything is perfectly aligned we'll give this button group we'll give button group a width of 
90% we delete the text lines and center here we'll give button group a 9 of 90% we'll give it display flex just simply copy these styles here and instead of aligning name, we want to give it flex direction colon because if we don't give it flex direction colon it's going to look like this and we want to give it colon so that it is not so it looks like this and text align center okay looking better i think the text on the paragraph here is a little bit too much so let's check it in the just studio code i think the one that we gave it is a little bit too much so we we'll delete a part of the text just to make sure the layout doesn't go out of control here yeah. yeah. And if anything that we looked about in this is that the text is not quite the text is not quite gray it's not quite black there's a little bit gray as you can see there so the text is not quite the text is a little bit gray so we say color p tags this should be their color. Okay, now let's continue. We cannot make everything perfect at the beginning, or will not be, or will not, or will not be here. So we have to be time efficient here. So let's look at the main. So what we want to do in the main is quite really simple. What we just have to just do here is just oh wait. Let's give this hundred percent. I'm not quite satisfied with it. One hundred percent. Aha, way better. So let's attend to this urgently. So we want to give the main a width. Of 90% margin margin zero or two save nicely done so what I want to do is I want to give each card a border of two pixels solid I think we'll go for that gray color which was 7e 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 So we'll put a colon on the border, on the border. So I think two pixels is too much. One pixel. And we'll give each card a padding bottom, or rather a margin bottom of five pixels. We'll change this in a moment, but instead of giving this margin button, there's a better way of doing this. You say display flex, just we'll give this flex direction at the moment to be colon because I've showed you what will happen. And what we'll do is I'll give this a gap of five pixels. So better give this a gap. So where is our gap? Let's make this 10 pixels. Okay, what is happening here is that the card is giving it a gap between the two flex items, and in the main, the two flex items are not the card. They are the H2 and the flex container. So let's fix that. We'll copy these styles. It's not for the main. It's supposed to be or the main flex container. So the flex container inside the main tag will give you this. And essentially, if you go to the main, okay, open up into the main. We're talking about this. Okay, you can see how the gap is far more efficient. And inside the card too, 
we we'll still give the card some padding as well so you the card a padding of 20 pixels sorry 10 pixels general padding okay see one pixels is still too much 0 0.5 should be better because this that was very it was extremely thin it is extremely thin at this point i'll go for 0 0.1 as thin as we can get so now that we have, we have done that let's go for the for the testimonial section so we'll come here we'll get this color as well so color zilla copy to the clipboard so say testimonials we'll give us a background color of this color or perhaps did i spell testimonials wrongly Yep, I definitely spelled testimonials wrong here. Yeah. I'll just copy exactly what I wrote there. Doesn't really matter. So what I'll do, okay. So I didn't change it. I changed the color to what it was back before. So what we had from the color picker so the color picker this is what we had from the color picker essentially just copy this then we'll put this back here so we're giving it rgb 215 245 and 245 come here and this is what we get so what do we want to give each testimonial? So we want to style this properly. Come here. Testimonial. Okay. So background. I'm gonna give us a background color of white, as you can see. The avatar. So I want to give the avatar a display of flex. The avatar is here. And what we want to do is that the H4 and the paragraph are one. So this is a mistake that we should have corrected since. As I said, they are supposed to be one. So let's fix that. So this, so we'll take this here, put this in a div of text. Okay, now they look like one now. So copy this text, put it here. So we should have fixed it for all the rest of them. Uh huh. So. What we just simply have to do is I will come here, I will say H4 testimonial testimonial H4 by the H4 inside testimonial. I want to give this a margin of zero. And we'll say testimonial H4, comma, testimonial paragraph. So the paragraph inside the testimonial. H4. So we have taken away both of their margin, they look like this. But to make this, yes, we are talking about but it's not right for us to use testimonial because there are multiple paragraphs. Let's be more specific and say avatar paragraph and avatar H4. That's a lot better. 
So what we want to do is that in, in the testimonial, we also want to give this a padding of 10 pixels. And remember the flex container that was inside the testimonial. So we say dot testimonial dot dot testimonial dot flex container. So what I want to do is I want to give it a display of display of flex. As you can see, they are flexed. We give this a flex. We give this a justify content space between. Okay, now it is space between. So between each testimonial, what we do is I will come to testimonials here. I will give them sorry, not testimonials, testimonial. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yes, it this color is not white. Each the testimonials is the background of this kind of greenish color. Each testimonial has a background color of white. And what we want to do is I want to give this display flex everything that we gave it to the main. I want to give it to the here. So you can see that gap. Looking nice. And the testimonials want to give it a width of. So this is where another problem comes essentially. The problem is that if we give it a width of 90%, that's going to shorten it. So we have to have another container inside that we're going to give that width of 30%. But let's continue styling the card. So last but not the least, sorry, the testimonial. Last but not the least, we have to give this date container a display of flex. So we'll come here, say date container display flex I'll give this a justify content of space between two it looks something like this so as we said before we have to have another container inside the testimonial day as what we did in the hero before so come here what we do is I will say inside testimonials what we do is i will fold this up say test container short for testimonial container make it div out of that we open this up we'll x this we'll put this inside of here put it inside of Here, no, please note that we're not putting this inside of, we're not putting where the H2, we're putting outside of the H2. And we'll put this here. Save. What we want to do is I want to say test container. We want test container to have these classes. So we say test container. Of course, the testimonial is going to have the background, but test container is going to have these classes paste this inside here i will give this a width of 90 percent and a margin of zero auto this should work now as you can see it works and we have to give some of them a little more text and margin there is a bit more text. So what we do, we we'll come here and uh, we'll say for this one, okay, for you can see that the third one and the and the second one had a little bit more text inside of them. So Lorem 15 save and we'll give this guy Lorem 
20 save come here and see now they have a little bit more text inside this looks more realistic and now we have to give these guys a padding at the bottom of it so we'll come here and we'll say um testimonials we want to give this a margin bottom of 20 pixels so we will give this a padding bottom okay now so we have that bottom space that we need what customers see so as for the H2, not just any H2, testimonials H2, we'll give it text align center. Looking not bad so far. We are making it look like the original design. Now for the pricing section of it. So the pricing section is not okay. It has a background of white. Come to Visual Studio Code. Okay. Right, let's continue. Come to the pricing section now. Price thing section and I will give it a text align center okay so that is nicely centered now we'll come to the price part of everything price part of everything so in the price part of everything this one is a little bit more complex to style First of all, what we have to do is that we have to get the background color of it. So we we'll come here using Colorzilla, we'll get the background color of it. So, so this one is a good blue golden color. We'll get that one. So first of all, we'll give this a border of one pixel solid, that gold color. Sorry. Then, then what we'll do is that we'll come and we'll get this color. So we say background color, save. And uh, you see, we have that color. So what we want to do is that this, first of all, this H4 has to be bigger and we have to have some padding. So padding, it is padding 10 pixels. We we'll say price H4, we should have used something way bigger, but we have the power of CSS at our fingertips. So we could just say 30 pixels. And if we are not satisfied with, I'm not satisfied with 30 pixels. I go with 40 pixels. Let's go with 50 pixels. That is a lot of pixels. So for the paragraph, so the price P, all we want to do is I want to give you a display. I want to use a display of flex, just five content, center, align item center. Center to so center the icon and the text vertically. We add these inside paragraph tags. So I spelled this wrong, so it's price. You can see that they are inside a flex container. So 
it's not quite perfect here not quite perfect yet so i'm not quite satisfied with it yeah i feel that we could do more to make it look more like the actual design here you should always try your best to make sure it looks like the actual design so this is like a flex box toolkit where you can play with flex box around this is center and if we look at the image okay So what I want to do to the paragraph is that I want everything to be I want everything to be aligned in such a way but the paragraph is not aligned in any way. So and notice at the top and at the bottom we have these kind of nice dividers which we did not put and we're gonna put right now. Uh, what we're gonna do for this paragraph, we're gonna have a div here of course. So we'll call this price dash p price p and what we do to price p is I'll say price p what we do is I'll say uh, border top two pixel solid Hashtag 7e. So it's going to be 7e, 7e, 7e. We'll copy this and we'll do same thing for the border button. I, I think two pixels is a little bit too much though. So we'll go with our gut feeling and we'll go with one pixel. One pixel. So what we do is that we'll give it some padding bottom 20 pixels. Oh, sorry. Margin dash bottom, not padding, because margin is outside of the box padding. Inside. Okay, so what we have to do here mainly is that first of all, we have to adjust this top section. This top section is not quite perfect at all. So, what do we want to do here? So, let's give this a class of header. Or rather price header price header so I'll go through my clipboard look for the right one okay wait a minute actually I've quite deleted it but it's good I deleted it so let's look at a different strategy of building this thing so I'll say monthly We we'll have a H1 that says nine dollars, nine dollars, slash. Then we we'll have a span of slash month. In fact, this should be a paragraph because paragraphs already have that. We call it auto rename extension. Help me do that quickly. Go and watch my video on Visual Studio Code extensions. I'm, I'm planning on it to be out, so make sure you subscribe to get it. So we're going to be using some advanced flexbox here. Let's see, flex. These two are going to be inside a flex container, and they're not going to be inside the same tag like we did with. Oh, damn it. Damn it. What just happened? Control X. Okay. Paste. Okay. Nice. So we also want, at the same time, these three. To be inside a flex container, like well, like what we did inside the text in complex grid of flex box. So I'm flexing these two are one against this monthly. 
So I said you these two are one against this guy. Now inside of these two are flexing this two up. Okay? It's kind of, it's kind of like what we did here. This avatar, everything here is one. And we're flexing it against this Twitter. Everything inside here, we're flexing it too. So let's look at that. Of course, we have to save it. Okay, now looking nice. So what we have to do? So we say. So let's not complete the name. You know that this has a flex of this has flex, flex, so we say flex container. So we say prize flex in case we are gonna use this in future, just display flex that we just want. All I want to do is actually price now flex dash container notice that there's no comma. So there's also want to use the display of flex. Well, this one is going to be the second one is going to be more advanced. But here, we want to give this a flex direction of colon. So a H1, the H1 here. So our our display of flex is not getting there, which is where it's supposed to be, but it's not getting there. So we said price, those are a price header. Price header. So what do you want to do inside? Yeah, simple. Or we just have to just do the display flex. I want to give this a justify content of center. So for some reason, it's okay, justify content of center. So the H1, the price dash header H1, what I want to do is I want to eliminate, I want to give margin zero. Price header H1. Let me give it margin zero. And what we do, so I'll give this align item center. I so you can see now, because of the margin, it, was, it went up, now it's not coming down. So what I want to do to the H1 as well is I want to do like font size 50 pixels. Uh, I think on my, on my list, uh, And if you notice, this H1 does not necessarily, it's not necessarily at, it's not necessarily here. It's necessary, so we'll give this flex start. It's not necessarily in the center, as you can see. You say display flex, uh, just five content. It's not necessarily in the center, so that's what I just wanted to say. Next start. Um, just for more clarity, we we'll make this price header flex. So why is this is now here? What we want to do is that for the for that one, so for this paragraph as well. So flex paragraph, okay? Flex paragraph. Uh, so here, so what I want to do is I will say uh, this paragraph here is class. It's a class of monthly what we do we say monthly 
margin zero. So monthly, what we want to do to monthly is I want to say text align left. So for some reason, this guy is not aligning to the left, which is quite weird. For some reason, it's not aligning to the left. It's quite weird. So what we do, is that as for pricing as well remove this i will say margin okay sorry let's not remove that all we just do is i will just say margin we don't have to do what we did for the rest of them because the color is white so we say margin zero or two and we'll give this a width of 90 percent Give the price a border radius. Border radius. So you can see the check marks are well aligned. So what we just have to just do now, last but not the least, is the footer. Which has the same color as the testimonial. So come here, come to the footer, say footer, we'll just give the footer display flex. Just give it this way flex. Uh, give it that background, this same greenish color. Copy. Say background color. Okay. What we do is that we we'll say text decoration. We want to give it the exact same styles that we gave it for the e tag up. Here, so we here we we'll copy this. See footer A. And you also notice that some of them are, you know, some of them have a the color of black. Before we fix that, we'll give this padding ten pixels. I'll give this part in 20 pixels. So what we want to do now is that this one is going to apply to a nth child of one. So this is the first footer. And the rest is going to have their own color. So for the rest, we are going to say, uh, we're going to give this a class. This is a class of black. Class black. Black dash E. Black dash E. Black dash E. Give this color black. It's the exact same thing here, but the only difference for black dash E is that the color. It's not blue, whatever this color is. Color is black.
So what we're going to do to that div, so we say footer div, we give that div a display of flex, and we give that a flex direction of colon. It's going to make something like this. So between the two items in the footer, we'll give them a justify content of space between. So we end up with a similar effect as there. So what we do as the pricing, we give the price, we give it margin bottom 30 pixels. So this is quite missing here, but we'll add it in a moment. So let's talk about making this responsive. We want to make everything into, we want to make the full web page, which is essentially something like this. So the part you have to focus on is the testimonials, this part and this part. So first of all, what we do is I will come here. I will do a max width. We we'll do a major query. So we we'll do a mean width. Max mean width. I want to say something like. Uh, uh, so mean width talks about as a when you perform a specific pixel like we we'll say mean width. Uh, 960 pixels. So these styles are going to go apply from 916 pixels upwards. So from 960, so if it's 959 pixels, it will not happen. 957, not happen. 956, not happen. 960, start working. That's once, two, like that, like 1,000, 2,000, 50,000, whatever. What I want to do here is simple. So we come to the hero. Okay, so we come to the hero. Hero container. Hero container, not hero, because the hero has the nav bar. We don't want to flex the nav bar along with those things that we're supposed to, along with these two things. We we'll say display flex. First of all, the image is supposed to be here. So we we'll say flex direction. Colon flex say flex direction colon reverse not sorry row reverse not colon because default is row and row reverse reverses it the other what we want to do we want to adjust everything So we'll give the hero image, hero dash image, a width of fifty percent. Sorry, sorry, fifty percent. And we'll also give this guy a width of fifty percent. So come here to the HTML. Come to share. We have hero text. So. So hero text give this a width of fifty percent. One more thing, maybe we'll give this guy a max width so that we don't just have indefinite width, max width of uh, one thousand pixels. Right, let's look at this properly. This text needs to be significantly bigger, and uh, um, and other small small things as well. So let's get styling. Q 
Hebrew text H2 will give us a width of 50 pixels. And we'll say Hero Text. Say Hero Text. Hero Text H2. Break tag. I'm going to give them a display of none. Okay. Or we'll just give the break tags a display of none. So, what's going on here? Let's remove this width of 50%. We're saying width. That's where it's coming from. Font size. Sorry. Yeah, maybe we could put this back on. Aha. Uh -huh. As you can see, it's looking way more like it but now. We'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. So what we want to do now is that we want to adjust this button. This button is supposed to have a fixed distance. So we'll come to the button. Button, button, button. We're going to say hero button. So say hero button font width bold okay bold that i'll give it a width of 220 pixels now look you can see the learn more is supposed to be there so we we'll say btn btn Dash group would we'll say flex direction group. And we'll adjust some certain things in the uh, BTN group. So in the BTN group, then the image has its own distance. So we'll just remove justify content and uh, say so justify content. So I content uh, space around. We don't want it to be center. I don't want space around in. in so just say uh, in initial. And we we'll say align items initial. Or maybe we could give it justify content. Could give it justify content space between the space between. And the BTN group. Instead of giving this a uh, instead of giving this a width of 100 percent will give us a width of 50 percent or we'll just give us a fixed width of 500 pixels six hundred pixels let's end it here or let's give it a width of 300 pixels 400 okay looking nice looking nice looking nice ah uh, still not quite perfect 350 better ah, so what we have to do now is from the hero text hero text will give this a margin right of 20 pixels Okay, yeah, so this is looking way better. Very close to this one, right? Looking way, way, way better.
So as for this part of it, what we do? So this guy is called the main, and in the main has a flex container, right? So we'll call me right here to the main flex container. So the main flex container will say something like a display grid, so grid template columns, give it repeat to one fr. Save so that it becomes something like this. You could use flex, but we could have used flexbox to do it like this, but CSS grid is way easier. So as for here, we we'll still use CSS grid as well. So we we'll come to testimonials. Testimonials dot test container. Say display display grid grid template colons repeat three one one fr as well one fraction is a relative unit okay so what we want to do instead of giving this a giving the price price we just say with 500 pixels instead of giving it a width of 100 percent sorry gives a margin of zero or two come to the footer footer so far as for the footer I will give everything a display of flex we reverse everything we did before so come here what we we'll do is I will just change this footer div so footer div will say display flex flex direction group First of all, I don't think this should be 500 pixels. We'll give this uh, 400 pixels. Maybe even 300. Okay, we'll give 400. That is okay. But the footer is not coming out quite great. Okay. So as you can see, it now makes it look like see, this guy is, this is on his own. I think this is on his own. This is on his own. And in fact, what is really happening here is that those three are on their own. Those three are inside one container. As you can see, they are on their own now. So instead of giving it justify, uh, Give it justify content space between space around sorry and uh the a tags in the footer the a tags the a tags within padding left 10 pixels and instead we we'll change this to uh margin Margin 10 pixels. Let's give them the margin. So, what is left for us right now is for us to do. So, let's check the responsiveness of the site. So what we do this is how it looks. Where we go. It's, and it comes back to the mobile view. You can see the footer is not quite good, but we'll fix that up in a moment. Okay. 
but everything else is working out fine. Everything else is okay. So let's just do the responsive navbar and the footer, and then we should be done with the entire website. So let's the full this time the footer. So I kind of understand how this works more. So, so in the in the so there is no display flex in the footer before. And this doesn't have a or oh, wait a minute, there is display flex, but it is set to flex direction colon. Let's see how that works. Right. Looks something like it. But we'll remove this one here. So what we do is I'll say footer footer image. What do we want to do? We want to give this uh, width 50 pixels, height 50 pixels. Maybe we'll even give it 20, 30, 25. So say 30, 30. So you see, it looks more like it right now. So what I'll do is I'll take this A. We, so we, I've been building this mobile first, and I hope you have learned how to build things by mobile first approach. Okay, now, what we'll do is I'll give this guy a font weight of nine boulder 900 whatever the boulders that we can get that's it to be two boat 700 looking nice i hope it doesn't break the desktop <laughs> layout so what we just have to just do in the desktop is that we just come to the footer uh we'll come to the footer And say display flex. We'll just have to just you say display flex, flex direction, call oh, row. Sorry, it's a row. Okay, now the footer is all fixed up. We come here, we can. Do this. You can see the footer collapses so nicely. Nicely responsive stuff. So we just have to just do is the nav bar. Oh. So let's do the nav bar. One hour seventeen minutes so far. Long video, right? Let's come back here. So what I want to do is I want to give this. Uh, let's go to what is supposed to be there. So it's going to supposed to be a uh, uh, home pricing. Then one button home. So say li home copy pricing copy FAQ for frequently asked questions and uh, copy paste and the last but not the least. The button, so we'll say button, uh, this button here. So we'll give this guy a class of menu. So what I want to do to not break the layout is that first of all, in when we exactly when we come to this, up first thing we want is I want the menu to have a display of none. And normally, I want to say nav you will. Nav, you will want to give it a display of flex, and otherwise, we want to give it a display of none. Save so let's see the system work. You can see the menu is gone, and when we come back to it, just to responsive mode, uh, the menu comes back. That's what we just did, nothing crazy.
let's fix it up first of all we say list style type list style none we we'll give this uh, align items center and I will say nav you will apply give this a margin give this a margin left of 10 pixels And we'll give the novel Nava with ninety percent. So as you can see, this is not quite right. I'm not quite liking this, as you can see. It's not supposed to less. So let's inspect this because everything is supposed to have one kind of general central alignment okay so we'll come to the ul class flex what we do is to see maybe we can give it a flex direction of our space around So what we have to do, the nav bar has a of flicks around, but we should. I think we should change that to space between. So we're gonna change the nav bar. We're gonna say flex direction. Just by content space between. We're gonna use a width of ninety percent. I'm gonna say M margin or two space between margins are auto for centering okay hmm so also our former styles let's open this up it doesn't still have that central alignment now I'm looking for a central alignment as you can see it, we have to have that central alignment as you can see this one starts from where this one starts from i think i know where everything starts where everything in the hero container i'll give it a max width of a thousand pixels so let's give that to the nav bar as well instead of with 90 percent I see they, they start from the same place, which is lovely. Okay, so we have to give this to the main to so we say the main flex container. Let's come to the main flex container. We'll give this a max with this testimonials test container. We'll give this a max with this. And you watch everything. You are supposed to watch every single thing now. So we have a slight problem here. What we'll do is that we'll use grid. Say grid. Uh, justify content center. Uh, it's not only flexible, you should, should that you can give justify content center though. But let's just say place items center. That's not gonna work. The way to center this is to say margin zero auto is one of the golden ways of centering tint okay so let's put this here and now this should be centered so i see it this one starts from here so it's this one that is kind of, that doesn't start from anyone okay so this one starts from there even it even follows to the foot i can see the foot as this starts from where it starts from Okay, so what we want to do, we want to push these features that, uh, or instead of giving this on the, 
flex container. Let's just give this one a name instead. Okay. Everybody's happy here. Okay. So the footer, that's going to be easy. You just come to the footer and just give this. Save. Okay. So this is why we are supposed to have a footer container. As shown, footer dash container and again our footer styles we want again change because this is going to disrupt everything that we have been doing before so make sure we have a prettier error So we take this, see, footer dash container So this is too widespread. We cannot say footer div anymore. So say class. I'm gonna adjust everything in a moment. So say a container. Footer dash a dot a dash container save if we open up the html now in a minute open up the footer we can see that we have footer container inside footer container we have trip we have everything else here. So what we want to do is I want to come here and uh, let's see what styles are being applied to the footer here. So all these styles we will now give this to the footer container. The footer container is like the successor to the footer. But the difference is that this background color is going to be to the footer. Kind of like what we did with the hero and what we did with the testimonials. Let's just make sure that this is responsive and we don't have any problems here. Great. Oof. Last but not the least, the nav bar is not quite complete. As we come here, we want to be able to click it and want to see a new responsive nav navigation. That's what we're supposed to do, actually. But um, it's quite easy to do. Uh, so I'm just going to do it for you guys. So what do we want to do here? What we just want to just do is that, you know, where we're giving a nav you will a display of none. So what we want to do is I want to give this a display of block. I want to give it a background color of white. I want to give this uh, position uh absolute uh this style type this style none to remove the list style position absolute takes out of the normal document flow and uh we'll check this out and see how this looks like as you can see it's been taken out of the normal document flow padding 20 pixels 
I would say Nav, well, a lie, hiding 20 pixels. Hope this doesn't mess up the desktop layout. <laughs> Does mess up the desktop layout. Does mess up the desktop layout. That's why this we're gonna give this a class. We say class uh, show. It does affect the li a little bit, so. I will come here as I will come to the LI and say, pardon, zero. Pardon, zero. Mm -hmm. So it's the way it was again. But maybe that 10 pixels is even too small. So 20 pixels. Aha. Uh -huh. So it gives this show. And normally we just want the nav you well to have a display of normal. Build. Give it to class to show. What we want to do is I want to dynamically control this using JavaScript. We just want to just say just say const menu is going to be equal to document dot query selector. I'm select menu. I'll say menu dot add event listener. Listen for when the user clicks it. And say I pass in the event object. Then what we want to do is that we also want to select the ul so constant nav ul is going to be equal to document dot query selector nav well so it also uses css pseudo selector like the way we select it says dot nav well dot class list dot toggle r toggle the show class that is not working come to the javascript console here to fetch that oh sorry we haven't even linked our script.js file script source script js If you say switch, skip, skip from skip to here because sorry, index the yes. What we we'll do here is I'll we'll just do a console the log. Hello. You see that hello? So it works. You can toggle it. We'll shift this a little bit so it does not block it. It works. When we come to, we'll fix this in a moment. But you can see it's work is responsive, essentially. So an easy way to do this is to just have a media query max width nine fifty nine fifty nine pixels. What we we'll just do? What we're doing here is that we only want this class to exist between this max. So any other time it will not exist. So even if we click it now and we come here, it's gonna go back to normal because that class doesn't exist. So let's adjust it a little bit and say position. Since you have absolute position, you can position it well, however we are. 50 pixels from the top. Aha. Uh -huh. One more thing. Come to the menu. Let's 
See, closer pointer. Nice. So that's it, guys. That's how you build this website. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I want to just adjust some setting things before we wrap up the video. And let's make it pixel perfect as we can. So first of all, in the main container, give this a gap of 20 pixels. Come here, you can see that we have that nice gap. Another thing here is this heart and this two. It's not quite flex the best. So flex that, give that a line item center. So we'll find that here, date container paragraph. So let's just do that. Make sure that everything is perfect. So date container paragraph display flex align item center. So we'll give that display flex align item center. Then the date container paragraph P image so the image inside our paragraph i'm going to give it some margin left of uh, five pixels sorry wrong margin right and so it has a little bit of spacing from the two and uh, looking much much better and finally this is not good at all so let's fix this immediately So come to price P. We'll take away justify content center for a moment. So I think this looks better instead of giving it justify content of center. Let's not make anything too much hasty, shall let's think about how this affects the mobile view. Okay, the mobile view is not very well affected. So what we do is that we'll come to the price. We'll give it padding 20 pixels. Nice. So we'll come to price P. So this check mark, we're going to give this an ID. So we'll say ID check. That will come here say check like what we did for the image we just give this a margin right of five pixels okay see that is there but it is only in one what we just do to make this better we'll just say price p Paragraph image. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. Everything is much, much better now. We look at it, but this one has to have some border radius as well. So come here to main container. Go up to main container. Card. So we'll change this to a much lighter color. And uh, we'll give this border radius 10 pixels. Oh, uh, 10 pixels is too, way too much, five. So now it looks a lot more better. What is just left is for us to just put in the correct font. And uh, that's it. We've attached some finishing touches and it looks a lot better and a lot closer to the design right now than before. But we do have to make this bigger, by the way. So we'll just come here. See, icon font size 30 pixels. I'm not sure if this will work. Boom. So now it looks a lot better. Let's check is the responsive view. Nice, 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 a little bit up. 
thank you for watching uh we'll see you in the next one